Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs template and project. Okay, so this one was a customer request. Brenda Mays, she sent me these. These two guys here. If you've made templates of your own before, you've printed on paper maybe, or you've traced them out, maybe you put them on cardboard. Anyway, she said, hey, I already know that dog bone templates exist for those pillows, but I wanted to do one a little different. She wanted this curve that's inside of here, so it looks more like a dog bone. So I said, yeah, we could do it as long as it wasn't like the other templates that already exist out there. We needed to make it a little bit different. So she had these two that she sent me, and not only did she send me these, but she also sent me this. This is the small guy, and then this is the medium guy. Now, this is medium, this is small, I don't care what you call it, but if you look, this size here, when she made it, she made it with the cardboard template. It actually comes out to this size. There's not a huge difference, but I want you to notice it's a little bit narrower. It's a little bit fluffier. So it's um, just the dimensions are a little bit different. So not a whole lot, so it's not gonna make any difference. That's the medium size. And then this is the small. This is the small here that she made. And then this is the one that I made. And we'll talk about, I've got it pinned right now because I wanna show you in the process how to close this and also some different ways to stitch this up and I also want to talk about this method here this guy here it's a dog bone pillow it has elastic on the back but instead of sewing three of these together where they come together here on the sides I just sewed the two together and then I put the piece of elastic this could go in the car over your headrest this could go on your uh, chair if you've got a recliner that has a headrest this right here if you don't like all the fluffiness of this one all the contortions that it has I like this but if you want something that's a little more smooth you can do this that's the small but you can also do this style in the medium and I'm not going to show you how to do this because it's a duh You're you're just going to stitch two of these. We're going to stitch three, but two of these together, and then you'll add the elastic. I have 12 inches of elastic that I used here, and that works on my headrest in my car. I've got a Dodge Grand Caravan, and this works really well. I'm not going to use it when I'm driving, but you know, the passenger it would be great to be able to use that. So 12 inches gives you an idea, but if you use elastic that really stretches, that's kind of a nice thing too. But you can also do something like this. So if you're not sure where it's going to be used, you can can put a clip like this on there stick this in the side here and then stick this in the side here and then you can adjust this to fit whatever so if it's on a plane if it's on you know uh, your your recliner if it's in the car you know having this is adjustable we just don't want this behind our neck they make these in different sizes but this is the one that I grabbed just to be able to show you so I'm going to put this aside here's a small one you can see that one there it's, it's adjustable. That's not going to hold as well, but you know, it is small and you decide where it is that you want it. But these guys here, I bet you have them in your closets. I bet you have them in your, uh, your um, coat um, hanger closet, you know, those kind of areas. So it's something that you probably have around that you can pull. All right, I'm going to get this one out of the way too, because I want to talk about the templates. And you can see from her template, I basically this one and this one, they weren't totally the same. So what I ended up doing was we made this one and then we made it just a little bit larger, but we kept the increments the same. Now what's cool about this are the cut marks there. Those cut marks that allow you to get in. If you were to cut around a regular template, a paper template, a plastic template, Sylvester is joining us. She's taking a good stretch. <laughs> so <laughs> if you were to cut with your rotary cutter, you wouldn't be able to cut in there at all. You'd have to trace it. The cut marks aren't completely perfect, but the idea is those cut marks allow you to cut in. And I'll show you how we're going to use those two. I've already cut a couple of these. We need three, but I want to show you how to use the template to cut. We'll see how long we can go with Sylvester here. Um, she may just be joining us throughout the video. Okay, so here's my fabric. And if you notice on the templates, I went ahead and wrote nine and a half by nine for the medium size. <laughs> and then here's my small, seven and five eighths by seven. So this guy here, when you look at this, you can see here, 
I've got almost seven and I've got here seven and five eighths. So we've got to double the seven. So you need a piece of fabric that's at least 14 and a half, maybe 15 inches. And you can see here, I've given myself a little bit more than 15. We're gonna place this on the fold. Now, fabric, you can use cotton, you can use a home deck, you can use minky, you can use flannel. You know, there are all kinds of fun fabrics to use. You wanna think about, do I want it to last? Do I need it to be sturdy? Do I want it to be cushy? Do I want it to be soft? Do I want it to feel good? And the other thing too is, do I want it to be washable? Because if these are gonna be used and really used where people's heads are there, then you may wanna wash it. If you are going to think about washing it, wash your fabrics before you cut these out. So you can throw them in one of those laundry bags, throw them in the washer, let them hang dry, because however it is that this fabric starts, we want it to be how it's going to be if you are gonna be washing it. So definitely wash your fabrics beforehand. All right, so I mentioned home deck, that's what I have here. Even this home deck is a little bit wimpy. So I highly recommend that you fuse with something. Here I've done a flannel, or a, a fusible fl a fleece, a thin fleece that you can see here, but we don't want it to be stiff. We still want it to be soft, but the idea of this is not just to give it a little bit of stability, but it also makes it nicer when you're stuffing, but then the other thing too is when you're closing this. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna get rid of that pin, and you can see here, I put a batting inside of here, and you can see that I lined that with my batting, and I stitched around. I just did some freeform stitching here all around, so you can see, and what that allows me to do when I go to close this, I can fold this over here. And when I fold that over here, what that's gonna let me do is be able to stitch that and not have that fabric shred. I did a flannel one, that's this guy here. And this flannel, I don't know if you can see right in here, boy, it just shredded to pieces when I started doing my stitching. So I ended up with the other ones going ahead and putting some kind of fusible. Can you see how right here it started to shred? This flannel just didn't hold up at all. So you may wanna stabilize it with something first just to give it a little bit more stability. The other thing too is it does give a little bit more oomph to it when you stuff it. So that's not a bad thing to do. All right, the reason why I have this here is I wanna show you cutting without and cutting with to see the difference. You can of course cut your fusible fleece first with the template and then cut your fabric and then fuse the two together or you can do like I've done here and fold this in half. I'm gonna start with this just because I've got it in front of me. We're gonna fold in half. We've got a fold here and I don't have it highlighted but it says fold right there. And I need to make sure that I've got enough fabric here and I've got enough fabric here. Now I'm working on the front of this project rather than on the backing here. Even on this, I'm working on the front versus here. If you're gonna do what I'm gonna show you, then work on the back side here, but work on the front here. And what I wanna show you is to get a pin, and as we go to cut, you may just want to go in and trace here. I'm not going to because I'm gonna go ahead and cut, but you can trace right inside of there. Those cut marks are there for you, but I know some of you are a little uncomfortable with the rotary cutter, so you may not feel comfortable cutting inside of there, so you can trace around. All right, I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna start on the left side. Right-handers, you would start over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is lined up on the fold, and I'm gonna cut, and I'm cutting through a lot of bulk here. All of this, that fusible fleece that I have here, plus a home deck fabric. At this point, I'm gonna cut off and I turn the template. Remember, we're dealing with the no-slip material. That means when I go to cut, I'm not having to pay particular attention to cutting the cardboard, cutting the plastic, tracing, you know, all of those kinds of things. I don't have to do that. All right, so when I get to here, you can see I've cut here. I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna keep my fingers out of the way, so I'm gonna move that over, and I wanna go right inside here. Now, you feel like, wow, I'm really pushing hard in there, and you can see I've pushed hard to the point where it allows me to pull out and it's pretty tight in there. So we've cut right inside of there. I'm gonna ignore this side of the cut and I'm just gonna cut off there. We're gonna come back to that in a second. We're gonna cut around. We're moving that template as we go. 
And you can see I'm left with just this here. So we're going to go back and clean that up. And again, this hand is not in the way because I do not want sliced fingers. I don't want to hear stories about sliced fingers. And do you see how that allowed me to go ahead and cut all of that out? So if you're not feeling confident with the rotary cutter with these cut marks, just grab yourself some practice fabric old sheets, old whatever it is, blue jeans that you have. Blue jeans, by the way, would make a really cute bone pillow anyway. So if you're practicing with the cut marks, get comfortable with it because this is going to save you all kinds of time once you get comfortable with that. All right, so you can see there's my bone pillow and look what I've done right here. I'm famous for trying to use as much fabric or as little fabric as possible. That's in the seam allowance, so I'm okay with that, but I want to make sure when I go to turn it to pay attention to right there. I'm going to put this one aside though because we're not working on this, but do you see how that gives it a whole lot more stability? So if you're making the one that goes behind your neck in the car that's just two, this is a great way for you to do it. All right, so I'm going to grab this. We're going to do the same thing. You can work on the front, you can work on the back. I'm going to work on the front, but totally up to you. If you need to go in and mark right inside of there, it's up to you to do that. I've already got two of my fabrics cut. And I want to go ahead and just cut. And you can see how when I move that template, it's going to allow me to just glide along the edge. That fabric stays right with it. That's the beauty of the no slip material. All right, now we're going to go back to that cut. And again, I'm right inside of there. Just hold down tight when you pull out. It is nice and tight. That way we are not cutting into the seam allowance. I don't want to cut any more than I have to. But do you see what that did? It allowed me to cut these longer cut marks that we have here allow me to get in. This is a new design. We've done the angle and that allows me to get right inside. Okay, I've got my three pieces. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Choose your fabrics based on whatever you have at hand. You can coordinate, be all kinds of fancy if you want to, but it really doesn't matter because when you're looking at a pillow, you know, depending on how you're looking at it, you can see when I turn this, that they're all going to have, there's some sailboats, there's some whales upside down for you guys, there's some whales, looks kind of like turtles to me, there's the sailboats again, and then we've got octopus, and we've got some sharks and all kinds of things. So when your fabrics have different choices versus this, batiks are always a good thing. Any kind of a decorative fabric, it's always a good thing to do the same thing, but I love playing with three different fabrics. The other thing you can do too is piece this. So I could have had scraps that I pieced together. We don't want to do a whole lot of it because I don't want a lot of bulk in the seams. All right, we're going to do right sides together. This fabric, there's not really a right or wrong on this. This guy here versus here. We'll just say that that's the right side. You can pin or clip, or you can throw caution in the wind and just start sewing. I'm gonna add just a couple clips. What I'm gonna do first is just hold my sides together in a couple different places. And then we're gonna talk about what we wanna do for the strap. Do you want a strap? Do you not want a strap? Do you wanna pull? What's nice about this is when you're getting comfy with this, you know, again, you're gonna use these in your chair, on your bed, you're gonna use this in your car. You're going to use this if you go to the doctor's office. But these guys here, do you see how long they are? I'm going to put this up to my neck. And I want you to see when I've got this behind my neck, when I'm pulling, do you see how I can really pull and get this exactly where I want? So if I've got tension, I can pull this and get this just where I want. You can even add a clip to this if you want to. So it's totally up to you. But if you're really stressed and you're sitting in your chair, Oh, I tell you, this feels so good. When Brenda sent me the box and I opened up this one and this one, Philip was like, what are those? And I said, they're neck pillows. And he's like, gimme. <laughs> we were sitting on our recliners and he grabbed this one and he loved it. And I said, okay, let's trade. And he's like, no. And then I gave him this one. He's like, oh, that one's nice too. So he didn't have a favorite. He liked both of them. He'll take either. 
I slept with this one the first night. The next night I slept with this one. These are great for me in bed. I like to have all that behind my neck. My neck kills me all the time. So I like that. Philip likes to lay flat in bed. So these don't work for him in bed, but use them in your bed. Use them in the car, use them in different places. These are truly therapeutic pillows and they are advertised online as therapeutic pillows too. So that's kind of a cool thing to be able to say when you're making these, that these are great gifts that are also practical kinds of things too. Okay, so the back to the straps. You decide how long the strap is and you can see on here I added elastic. I honestly, you know, this is a headband that I cut in half. There's one half, here's the other half. I honestly am not crazy about the elastic because I think this is going to stretch and stay stretched if I pull on it a whole lot. But you can use a heavier duty elastic if you want to. I'm just going to use this for these guys here. I think this will be a nice addition. And you decide how long it is you want it to be. And I'm going to go ahead and say right about there is how much I want. And you can see I've got six inches. And I had said 12 inches before when I did this, and that's basically what I got. So we're going to do 12 inches for each side. And you want to press this, but when you press this stuff, be careful because ribbons, elastics, those kinds of things, sometimes they like the heat and sometimes they don't. I'm going to stitch the edges together and we're going to stitch it down in the middle here. Now the middle, when we st stitch all of these three sides together, it gets kind of convoluted. You'll see when we get there, so close enough to that little dip that we have there and then having that in the middle. So we're going to stitch this together. We're going to stitch this together. Let me move these out of the way so you can see these at the sewing machine. And I haven't talked about stuffing, but of course, polyfill stuffing is a great thing to have. But open up all those pillows that you've decided you don't want anymore. They don't match your house. They don't match your decor. Then go ahead and unstuff them and use them. All right, I'm going to stitch and back stitch. All right, so we've stitched both of these together. So I've got two of these. And what we're going to do is, again, right in the center, basically where that is, that notch is where I'm going to put this. And we'll add a clip there. And then we'll stitch that down on one side first before we stitch the two layers. Because basically what we're going to be doing with these is stitching right to that point and just stitching and tacking that in place. I do tend to go a stitch or two past that middle point just to make sure that everything on that end is covered so that there's no opening there. We don't want that strap popping out when somebody pulls it because we haven't stitched carefully. So I'm going to place that clip there. We'll go over to the other side and we'll put our other uh, strap there as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and place a clip here for this one too. And you can use a clip or a pin, whatever works for you. And again, I've chosen this, but you can use ribbon, whatever it is that you use, we want to have enough strength to it. So there are some ribbons that just don't have enough oomph to it. So we want to make sure that whatever you use is going to be really able to handle all the wear and tear. All right, so at the sewing machine now, I'm just going to remove that and we're going to go right over here and just stitch back and forth. And I'm basically in my seam allowance, and um, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch seam allowance, maybe three eighths scant um, seam allowance is what we're gonna be using here. So wherever you are in that seam allowance, you're good to go. If you're gonna use a batting or fusible fleece, then definitely the three eighths inch seam allowance would work best. And you may even wanna tack this on from the back side so that you make sure that you're right there in the middle. And you can see when I turn this over, here is where that little dip is. I'm about halfway there. Same thing with this over here. All right, now what we're going to do is start right there. So we want to make sure that we've got this inside. You can add a clip if you want to. I'm just basically going to add a clip over here. We're not stitching over on this side. We're going to start stitching right in the middle. Again, maybe just a hair to the left and stitch around. When we get over to this side, we're going to stop there. We're going to do those two pieces together. If we were going to make that neck rest, 
that I showed you uh, that was white with the kitty cats, I don't know if you noticed the kitty cats, then we would continue to stitch around and leave an opening either here or right about here. I like to do this area here, leave that opening, and then have your elastic that you have. That 12 inches is what I did. So you'd have your elastic going from here to here. And that elastic basically is this length. So if you were gonna make that, then we would be good with the two pieces. What we'll be doing is putting this third piece in. So we're gonna stitch right along here first. And I'm using a zipper foot just because it allows me to have the guide there. If you have a seam guide foot, you know, that allows you to do curves easily, then that's a good thing. You can use that. If you don't, the zipper foot I found just works pretty well for these kinds of things. And again, I'm doing about a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Whatever it is that you're doing, just try to be consistent. If you're a quilter, then you know how much easier this is to do. If you're a crafter and it's good enough, you know, then close enough. You can see right there, it was a little bit off. I'm okay with that. When we get to the center here, I'm gonna flip this strap inside. And we want to make sure that's laying down so it doesn't get caught. I'm not going to pin it just because I don't want that pin grabbing me or anything else. And when I get to that center, I'm just going to back stitch a couple times back and forth just to make sure that we've got that. All right, we'll cut our threads. We're gonna go back to the table and add that third piece in here. These really go fast. If you do assembly line, the longest thing is the stuffing part. So grab your stuffing and sit in front of your favorite movie or whatever it is that you like to watch and binge watch because it's gonna take a while to stuff. I'll show you a couple tips about stuffing, but stuffing is stuffing. You know, there's nothing that's really gonna make it a whole lot faster. There are definitely things that will make it easier. So I'll give you some of those tips. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm leaving this area here. I wanna make sure that this side right here, wherever it is you want it to be, we want one side to be where we have our turning area and that's right here. Now, one of the things that I recommend that you do with this before you get to that point, let's actually do it over here and I'll show you what I wanna do. So just to make the turning part a little bit easier, you can go ahead and just stitch along here. And that's basically gonna tell you where the, the seam allowance is. So we've done that on one side, we're gonna do that on the other side. It doesn't really matter if they line up as far as from here to here, as long as my seam allowance is pretty consistent. And again, this is one of the reasons why I like to use uh, like a, a, whether it's a batting that you've gone ahead and done some free motion quilting on or spray basting on or fuse and interfacing or something, it's just gonna give a little bit more stability to, to this. We're stuffing with a whole lot of stuff. So having this here, what that'll allow me to do later on is use that as my guide to turn that back under that little stitch that's there. You could even put a reinforcement if you wanted to. They make the strips of elastics that are the clear elastics and all kinds of stay stitch, you know, all kinds of different things. If you've done clothing before, you know, that's one of those things that's just really, it's a nice feature. So you decide if you wanna have that. All right, so we've clipped along here. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a couple clips here just to hold this in place, but we're gonna do the one side and then we'll come back and we'll finish clipping this area here. I'm just holding these together so they don't get separated a whole lot. All right, so now this is where we've got these three areas coming together. So right here and right here, these guys here, you can see this here doesn't have a lot of flexibility to it. So what I wanna do is just pull this part back, the blue back as far as I can and I'm actually going to, over here on this side, put a pin in here. When I have that pin in there, oh, I've got pins right underneath my sewing machine. When I have that pin in there, that's just going to hold it for me a little bit better. I'm going to put this further out of the way. And what that's going to do when I go to stitch this down, we're going to be stitching 
this. You can see here, I went a little bit further like I talked about. So now we're going to go back here and we're going to stitch around. We're going to stitch around here and then we stop at that next corner. So I'm holding these here. I want to pull that blue back out of the way too, as much as I can as I'm at the sewing machine. And I'm basically in the middle again of where all of this is. I'm just going to hold in place. I'll back stitch a little bit there too. And this may be where you want to take your table off so that things don't get caught in that table. It's up to you. And if you feel the need to go ahead and really, you know, reinforce this area, you can do that too. We're going to use pinking shears to trim some of this, but I'm not going to trim a whole lot because I really do want to have most of that bulk in there just for security. All right, so over here, I'm going to pull that blue back. I'm going to make sure that's out of the way. And when I get to here, I'm basically going to be stitching just a little bit past my previous stitches. And back stitch. All right, let's take a look at what we've done. We're going to peek inside so you can see what's happened so far. All right, so you can see all three of these are really coming together at this point. So my strap is nice and secure. You can see that's really in there good. And I've got these two here that are already sewn together. These two here that are sewn together, we need to sew these two together. All right, so we're going to now look at that area that we want to leave open. We already know where that is because we've done that little bit of stitching there. So that's just a guide to help us. We can get rid of this pin now. And again, I just want to make sure that I don't stitch the blue flower piece inside of all of this or stitch that down. And because this strap is pretty stiff folded, some of your ribbons and things like that, a thin ribbon will be flexible and you could stitch over that a couple times. This is not really going to let me do anything. So you can see right there is my last stitch. I'm basically going to be stitching right about there. And you may have to back stitch. My machine doesn't want to let me get over there. My foot doesn't want to let me get over there. So I'm just going to kind of move that in place. And a hump jumper or jump pumper, whatever it's called, that might be a good thing to have right now. I don't really need it, but you get the idea. All right, when I see my stitches, then I know I'm going to go ahead and just lock this in, back stitch, and hold that in place if you want. And we're going to skip ahead. We don't want to have a huge turning area because the turning area is what I have to sew by hand. So not only does the stuffing take a while, but the sewing takes a while. And if you've got arthritis like I do, ooh, it hurts. All right, so we're going to lock that in place, back stitch if you want to. And when I get up here, I'm going to make sure that that blue flower is out of the way. And it's easier to stitch here, but I'm going to go ahead and just back stitch and make sure that we're good to go. All right. So let's take a look at what we've done. You can see here I stitched a little bit further. And you can pick those out if you want to. I'm okay with that because all of that is right at that nice little kind of dog bone area where it has that nice curve. So we've got the strap, we've got the strap inside. I've got this turning area here open with that stitch that's here. And I wanna go ahead and before I go in and reach in and pull that out, I'm gonna trim just a little bit. You can use pinking shears as I mentioned, or you can go ahead and snip. I'm gonna cut some of this, but not a whole lot not right to the edge like I usually do, just because I do want to have some of this bulk that's here, just for security. 
You can go in with your scissors and just snip, snip, snip if you want to do that instead. So you can snip and snip and snip, especially at these areas where there is a curve that's straight, but totally up to you, whichever is fastest, whatever it is that you have. Some people love pinking shears. I kind of go between, they're my favorite and then they hurt my hands. So it's up to you. But you can see here, basically we're gonna go in and just snip, snip, snip. You can also take out the V's if you want to. Right in here, I don't wanna take out a ton of bulk, but I am gonna take out that excess of the ribbon or the strap that's there. Same thing over here. We don't need that bulk that's in there, but we have stitched it down well, so we should be pretty good. All right, so you get the idea. Of course, I would recommend going ahead and stitch, uh, snipping all of this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this because I want you all to see what it looks like and how fast and easy this is to do. All right, so because I have no stabilizer, I have no batting, I have no fusible, this is really fast and easy. It's a home deck fabric, but even so, really fast and easy. Quilting, quilting cotton will be fast and easy. Minky will be fast and easy. You can use a serger for this, but those curves for a serger is not the easiest thing to do. So I highly recommend your sewing machine. You could have finished off with a, a zigzag stitch along the edge, that might be a really good thing to just reinforce. Notice what I'm doing here, I'm just pushing a little bit. So I talked about turning and stuffing and one of my favorite things to use when I'm stuffing is this, but it's also great just when turning because right now these seams that are here, let's see if I can get that inside, these seams, I really want them to pop open. So I'm using the flat edge that's at an angle and I'm not pushing so hard that I'm ripping my fabric, but I am pushing pretty hard to be able to get those seams and those curves in place. We've got three on each side, so we wanna make sure that we get those nice and open. And pressing would be a good thing. I'm not gonna press just because I don't wanna take the time, but pressing is a good thing to be able to do here, just to lock in those curves that you have here and then we're gonna start stuffing. I'm not gonna stuff this in complete because it will take a while, as I said, but I wanna show you the stuffing process. And if you've done dolls before, then you know more techniques than I do, I'm sure, about stuffing and more secrets and more tips and strategies and those kinds of things for stuffing. So what we're gonna do is grab some polyfill and again, grab a pillow if you've got one. Uh, I love the idea of recycling and just keeping things out of our landfills and instead of buying something more. But do you see what I'm doing here? I'm just pulling it apart. If you've got a pillow that you're using or even just batting, it's stuffed in that bag pretty densely. So what we wanna do is just make it nice and lofty. So just take some time and pull apart. This is a good thing for frustration too. Grab a little bit. We don't wanna grab a whole lot. And I do start grabbing a whole lot as I'm like halfway through because I get so tired of doing this because my arthritis really <laughs> kind of flares up. But I'm stuffing into one of the bone ends, the curved bones. And what I'm gonna do is just push with the stiletto here inside of there. You wanna fill up one of the three and then move on to the second of the three and then go on to the third of the three, and then go to the other side. What that'll let you do is not have lumpy bumpy gaps in your pillow. So get it inside there, and then push into, and just because I'm going on to the second one doesn't mean I'm done with the first one. We're gonna end up going back and adding more and adding more and really filling this up. If you use these, and you really do use these for your back, for your neck, you're gonna know how much stuffing works for you, you know, for what feels good to you. So fit it to where it feels good to you. I also want you to fit it to where it's gonna last. If you make it wimpy, it's not gonna hold up very long. So, you know, stuff it maybe a little bit more than you think. I think you're gonna end up using a lot more stuffing than you think you will. And again, if you've done pillows or anything like that before, then you know stuffing ends up 
going a whole lot faster than you think it's going to, to be, and you're using a whole lot more than you think you're going to need. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this one side to where I'm thinking we're pretty good, and we'll move a little bit over to the other side, and then we'll talk about closing this up. All right, so you can see that it's taken shape. And I go back and forth between my hands and the stiletto and use whatever tool, hemostats, knitting needles, whatever it is that you like that you have on hand that's not going to poke through. We don't want to poke through because I don't want to have to turn this thing right side in and start all over again. Okay, so you get the idea. We're, we're seeing some shape here. You can see there's a little bit of a divot there. So in here is a little bit of a pucker. So we would continue to stuff and then you would move on to the other side. When you move on to the other side, then you'll have that middle area that you want to do. And again, you're just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. All right, so you get the idea. We've got half stuffed and not stuffed, and then that middle area is going to be a completely different kind of a process. When you're doing that middle area, you want to decide how full this needs to be. You can see this is pretty lumpy and bumpy. You decide, do I want to have all of that? Because when I close this up, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little bit of a bump, but that's where your neck is going to be, the base of your neck. So you figure out how full you want this to be. Look at your corners. Make sure that those rounded curves there, you can see there's a little bit of wimpiness there. So I would go inside and really get right inside of here and just push down. This is just that process and you can see how that created a little bit of a gap. You can move that around and play with it as much as you want. I'm going to go ahead and grab a pin and we're basically going to, remember this one, I didn't add that seam so I'm just going to basically pull this nice and tight much further down and pin here. And that means I can work with this without having to fool with and worry about all of that, okay? So with this one here, let's take a look at what we did here. Remember that stitch that we added? When I've got that here, that's my guide that lets me know. You can see here, I don't have a guide on here that lets me know. It's right on the edge. That's where I sewed that batting there. So I'm going to have to fold this down. You can whip stitch that down if you want to, but what I like to do is just start on one end. I'm folding here, I'm folding here. I'd have my needle and thread already threaded and knotted. And I'm basically going to be doing a ladder stitch here. Right to left or left to right, whatever works for you. But this material right here is going to have a lot of stress on it, so you want to make sure that you've given yourself something to reinforce it, a little bit more seam allowance than I have here. If you want to have the batting, if you want to add something to it, go ahead and do that. But I think that's a pretty easy way to explain closing that up and finishing that off. You could do it a little bit further here if you wanted to, but this area to me, it's kind of you know, right there in the middle and fairly straight. Okay, so that's as simple as it is to make these dog bone pillows, the neck pillows that you can use for therapy, but also just for fun. You know, it's just a fun thing to have. These are great gifts to make, to give. These are great gifts to make, to sell. If you're going to make one, you better make 10 more because everybody's going to want one. As soon as somebody tries it, they're not going to share. They're going to want their own. Just like Philip, he didn't want to give it back. So make a bunch of these. Brenda came up with the cardboard template for me. She made me the samples and I made the templates. If you have a great idea like that, then give me a call. Let me know. We'll talk it over and if you want to make me a sample and send me the template that you use then if it's something that I think would be worthwhile to make a template for then we will do that. Dog bone pillow medium, dog bone pillow small. You can find them on my website winterdesigns.com by searching bone or dog or pillow. Dog is an easy one to put in there and the dog bone pillow you'll see there's a medium and a large and you can buy them separately or you can buy them together. I think these are a whole lot of fun. I highly recommend that you go 
raid your closet. Blue jeans, t-shirts, all kinds of things. You can do knitted fabric, I would stabilize it. The jackets that we've worn, the tweed jackets, all those things, flannels, you know, the holidays, all of those things would be really fun to do. This doesn't have to be a one-time gift. This is the kind of thing that you can make one for the 4th of July. You can make one for Father's Day. You can make one for somebody's birthday. You can make them for Christmas because they're going to be using it. It's going to be behind their head. It may be get, getting dirty. They may have given it to somebody else. So make another for them because they love them. This has been a really popular project on the internet forever. I didn't come up with it. Brenda didn't come up with it, but we just added the no slip material and that cute curve and the the cut marks. Those cut marks make all the difference in the world. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I have lots more projects and I have another project from Brenda Mays as well. So look for that too. Thanks.